Hey, everybody. So, here we are again. Hi, guys. Walt and, and Sheila. Sheila. It's Sheila and Walt. That's it. Cooking up, what are we doing? Healthy recipes. We are cooking served up. Served up on Live Liga. Live Liga, that's right. And look. Oh, look at this. We are trying new things. We've been okay. backwards for okay, the last. Okay, wait a minute, wait a wait. minute. Oh. I want to know if anybody knows, although I don't think anyone's there yet. Okay. Um, but I want to ask folks if they can figure out why these look normal. Because we think that Walt's sister, for instance, will be able to figure out what we did. And so we'll tell you later how we figured this out. But aren't you proud of us that we actually, you can read our names this time. Hopefully. Oh, oh, this That's is the very the first time. So I'm trying to figure out how to turn on uh, the video here for us this time on here so that we can follow along. We've got the, we're in our new kitchen. And so we wanted to share a new kitchen, and um, so because of that, let's see, if I do videos, does it do the, no, that's old, so that won't help us. So I am trying to figure out how to go up to do live here on the video, and we may have to get Cynthia to help us. Cynth, can you come Keep help us? Oh, here. Us. Is, no, keep, no, I don't want to watch that. That's old. I want new. Don't we all want new? Yes, we do. So I can't figure this out, so you're going to okay, have to help I'll me. I'll be back in a second. All right. So today, um, once we figure this out, Walter's actually really the main feature. So I'll just take up a little time right now to say hi to everybody and welcome you um, yeah. to, I think this is our fourth Facebook Live, you know, healthy recipes served up on La Liga. And today we're doing rubs and summer grilling. We have really yummy, savory rubs, and we're really looking forward to sharing this with you today because this is the time of year right so we um we want things to be a little more simple you know we want things to be a little less complicated we don't want things as hot in our kitchen um as before uh when we have all of our you know stove tops and our ovens on so we're going to talk a little bit about how how we can ease the heat in our house and grill up some yummy things um, uh, as we enjoy our summer and enjoy the fresh food. Don't you love this time of year? I do. There are just so many, just even going to the grocery store. I mean, of course we love going to the farmer's market. Do you guys also uh, enjoy going to the farmer's market? Do you have one near you that you take advantage of? Um, we actually have a few um, kind of different times of the week even. But Saturday, um, we have you know kind of the big local farmers market, and Walt and I actually enjoy um, bicycling there. There are two benefits to that. One is we get a little exercise, and number two is we can't buy too many things because <laughs> we have to figure out how to ride back with all of it. We have been known, however, to buy too much and uh, ask them to hold it and come back for it. So we have been known to do that too when there's so many wonderful things. But Right now, we're starting to see you know, more and more fresh fruits, certainly vegetables, and of course it just escalates in the summer. So um, it's a, a pretty yummy time to start imagining simple rubs on you know, fresh foods. Um, Walt is actually gonna do the whole kit and caboodle today in terms of um, grilling, and of course, um, I think we mentioned did we figure it out? No, but we have we borrowed our daughter's phone, so I have Cynthia's oh. phone. She's working on that. You know, so here she meantime. comes to our rescue again. Yeah, again. You know, she's just she's that kind of gal. So, so today we're gonna you, end up with grilled apples. Yes, we are. So are we gonna give them the menu? Well, of let's what do we're that. Do? Yes. Um, so we're gonna get started um, kind of in the reverse of the meal, just because of the way Walt's gonna do it. I was just starting to to explain yeah. that. We're in our brand new kitchen. That's why this may look a little different to you guys. Um, it's brand new to us too. Yes. It's, well, I mean, like last week we moved. Um, so we're still getting used to things. So we actually tried to get everything out ahead of time instead of banging around in the cabinet. Where did we put that? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Where was Which that? Oh, oh right. yeah. So we tried to get it all. I am switching. Oh, is she good or what? All right. So get get at it, Sam. Help us out. With your great good works. Thank you. So she came to the rescue again. She figured out how to get it. So because we're trying to um, do the Facebook Live a little further away. And so instead of Walt and I with our faces in the video, we wanted to um, have it a little further away. 
Uh, somebody had mentioned that they'd like to see us actually preparing more. And so fortunately, we actually have a kitchen counter now that's flat. We used to have two levels, and so it was kind of hard to show you guys what we were doing. So now we'll be able to show you, uh, but it also means that the camera has to be a little further. So give us feedback. Tell us if you like this better, because we can certainly move the camera around. Um, and we've set things up so that you can see kind of the different uh, things that we're going to highlight today. And so we're getting back to the menu. Since um, Walt has all these yummy rubs, and we've kind of collected them over time, and we're going to talk about that, um, we kind of wanted to show you a meal, because as you know, we always try and do a meal um, on our La Liga and... Um, Which we then have later this evening. I know, because we always eat when we prepare. <laughs> it's like, this is really great for me, because we yep. do this, and then dinner is done. That's it. We um, need fixed dinner. So, we're going to do um, the, the main feature of the meal. Would is, have been. Well, we were, we were thinking flank steak, but fortunately, rubs are very versatile, so if you get a piece of beef... Generally speaking, it's going to taste good, and so we had flat iron steak available at the grocery store, and that's what this yummy looking thing is. So, um, and as you can see, the thing that I love about flank steak mm -hmm. and that the skirt steak shows too is, you know, it's marbled, but it actually is much lower in fat than some other cuts of meat, and so um, it still will, will add flavor, but you don't end up with a whole lot of calories and a whole lot of fat. So. And because it's fairly thin, it cooks pretty quickly really to still be able to keep it rare in the middle, have it really nicely browned on the yeah, outside. Really and with all those, the way, you know, when you slice them really thin, and I always sort of do it on the diagonal, um, You're going to show them that later then they end up right. being really tender. Even though it's not that great a piece of meat, it really ends up being really flavorful so, and tender. So, and boy, you're just going to have to watch me enjoy this. So we're yeah. gonna have the, the um, steak, which is flat iron steak this time. And then we're gonna have grilled broccoli. So the whole point was that we wanted to grill everything to prove to you, show you, and enjoy the benefits of grilling everything um, so that you can, it's kind of an easy way to prepare your food. And for those of you who have the grill outside, we don't yet have a grill outside. So our trusty old George Foreman, George Foreman is standing in for us today, which also goes to show you how flexible and truthfully, uh, George Foreman uh, using it to do all your meal is the same easy uh, kind of prep, easy cleanup as you would have outside for the grill. And, and honestly, it does isn't it cooler? Yeah, I mean, it's I much better. Instead than... of having, I mean, I, last night, we had, we've had another son come into town because we're kind of gathering for, um, you know, kind of for summer vacation here. So we're super psyched. We have all three kids here. And um, we served up uh, dinner, but I did it stovetop and because I didn't think about the George Foreman, quite frankly, for the steaks that we had last night. I don't know. It's a beef, beef couple of days, I guess. Um, and I <laughs> set off the fire alarm. So, um, or smoke detectors. Yes, I guess smoke. not the fire alarm yes. because I didn't have a big huge fire. But, um, so the George Foreman won't do that to us and it won't get all that heat and smoke going. So Walt's gonna get going here. So to finish up, we're gonna have the flat iron steak. We're gonna have grilled broccoli. We're gonna have, anybody know what this yumminess is? This is butternut squash. And you know, typically it's something that's harvested in the fall as we know. So it's not a perfect, uh, show of summer wonderfulness. On the other hand, it is just so yummy in the rub that we use that we couldn't resist. We had to show you our yummy rub for this. And Stacy just said she uses a George Foreman, but she uses Not the stand-up kind. And oh, actually, oh, that's right. We, we had one of that. those too. Right. So when we first moved but to we Colorado, we gave it to his son. So that's why we don't have it anymore. And Stacey. lived in a condo, we couldn't have a gas grill. Right. Yeah. And so that's what actually that. started us. It's on. actually really good. Thank you for reminding me. I missed right. that friend. That was and really this we got friend. because my mom thought at one point when we were trying to learn to become healthy yep. that a George Foreman was so great because although it grills, it then sort of lets the, the fat, the fat off, off, you know, off it and be great for us. As does the stand up. And I sort of said the last thing I want to This is need. one of my funny stories on him because he's like poo pooey. He, uh, he's so, a real guy. You know, why do I want one other electric appliance? Right. On my that? countertop. That's right. right? But he, the fact of the matter is, he fell in love with it. Yeah, and right. actually, two working people, because Walt and I, really, the majority of our married life, we've both been working. There was a period of time when we were having all three of our kids that, um, you know, I took time off and then he took time off. 
but really both of us been working for most yeah. of the time. Absolutely. And so we're always looking for ways to eat healthy, to figure out how to not spend all of our evening prepping the food, but also enjoying a delicious meal. And a George Foreman is another way to it's do that. It's an easy way, and, right. It's and great. I just love the fact that my mother-in-law is the one that, you know, because only she could get away with giving us this because right. he would have so not, he would have so poo pooed it. Other way, he did poo poo it, but it was his mom. And so the two of us were kind of in cahoots, I gotta tell you. I never knew that. Uh, <laughs> confession time, confession time. So uh, we ended up with, the, and this is, I don't know how old this wonderful machine is. It's, it's great. It's long. It's, and it's, it's the large. So, so what we were, no, really. we are gonna do the butter, grilled butternut squash with the, plank, the flat iron steak and the broccoli. We're going to show you how to do that. Um, and then for dessert, we're going to do uh, vanilla yogurt. We do the triple zero. Um, actually, I think um, Nikki Massey is really the one that turned me on to the triple zero oikos. Um, it's a really yummy yogurt um, that's good for us, um, but it's it, and it stands up well um, for other uses. But we use it uh, a little dab of it with these grilled apples that have this fabulous spiced um, flavoring to them because of the rub that Walt developed. So he's gonna start with this. We're doing the reverse because one of the things with a grill we wanna point out, um, and, and, and outside grill you don't quite have the same issue, is that true? But with this, the flavors are gonna meld into each right. other, so we need to be mindful of the flavors the that, that we're we using. Grill them. Right. right, okay. So, so I'm gonna start at the end, so with the, our dessert is the apples, and typically, I use you know a typical um, apple corer, right? Um, and Everybody needs this in their kitchen. If you don't have one, you gotta get one. But just you know, for to show you guys the other way around, I then have the apple and cored it. I do fairly thin slices. We're leaving on. And he sharpened our knives, you guys. Uh, the cooking like this it is so much easier if you just spend a minute to sharpen your knives. Right. But you know, because so they're they're you nice want and thin. For a while. You do. Um, and uh, we left the skin on really for color. Mm -hmm. It's good for you, um, but it's also pretty. Because that's part of it. You know, visual appeal is key. So when we're creating a healthy meal, it has to be tasty, visually appealing, and it has to look like enough, which is kind of the whole MO of La Liga. So And then the rub we use for apples really is just ground cinnamon and a little bit of stevia. And we use stevia, you know, it's natural, but instead of adding the calories of the um, of the sugar, um, I just, because it's such a small amount, and so what is that um, cinnamon ratio to stevia? Well, it's a one tablespoon to a half, so that's one to six. One, okay, okay, just tell so me the amount. One so, tablespoon to, of... Uh, so you have a half teaspoon of the stevia to one tablespoon of cinnamon, so clearly that's not a whole lot. And, one of the things is when you use a lot of stevia sometimes, you have to be mindful that it, it ends up with kind of an aftertaste, at least the ones I've used. Um, so this way, if you don't get that at all, and yet you get you know, kind of that wonderful spiced, um, sweet and savory of the cinnamon um, and the sweet of the stevia to really make a delicious. Um, and how much do you put on this? Well, I mean, as you saw, he was kind of doing his thing. So I, I wouldn't it so it's over. lightly covered. Yeah, he does it so that it's, um, I don't know if you can see, but it's, um, he's done it so that it's a light dusting on it. So don't overdo it or that kind of takes away. This, what this does is really enhance the sweetness of the apple. You don't really need a whole lot of sweet because the apple itself is sweet. Um, and then he's going to grill it so they actually looked grilled, right? So that's going to be the yummy part of this. And it actually, it does truly kind of caramelize and bring out the, the flavors and the aroma, honestly. That's the one thing about Facebook Live. I really wish we could um, share some of the smells that we're gonna be creating here and, in the kitchen. And even though- they're good ones, promise, I promise. Hear the sizzle? Love there's the sizzle. sizzle. You can hear the sizzle. So there's nothing better than sizzle, right, you guys? So, uh, hi Peggy, hi Barbara. Thank you guys for joining. This is just like super fun. It's like having friends over, you know, joining you in the kitchen. I wish I could offer you guys glasses of wine. I think we might add yep. that next time. What yes, do you think, Walt? Well, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> Please, I'll be drinking. What Ice tea say? for those of us who don't want to fly. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll do the uh, Arnold Palmer, I'll do the glass of wine. And this time of year, it's got to be a crisp white wine, right? Um, so um, Walt gave me this because this is what we're spraying on and this is a new find of mine and I think I mentioned this in another one but for those of you that are joining us for the first time this time this is my new favorite find and part of 
what we do here is try and share the things that we use and find. Um, and this is Pam. Believe it or not, this is what Pam can look like now. And it's the actual olive oil cooking spray. So that um, you don't have, you know how aerosols really are good for our environment. On top of which, I like more olive oil than air and spray and right. additives. So I'm in love with this because for the first time I They're have smaller. a squirt. I have a squirt that actually works. You know, I've tried so many of those other ones where you buy uh, and add the olive oil to it, and I've never found one that doesn't clog up and stop working. And uh, believe me, many family members have given me these over the years, and I try them and I'm super psyched for a while, and then they just don't work. So um, I don't know, is Rob um, Portinga on? Yeah, he said he might join, and I, um, you guys will have to tell him if he's not on now. But um, he challenged me to find a measuring um, grinder where I could do fresh pepper a corn. Pepper mill. Grind, pepper a pepper mill. mill that measures. Oh, is that what it is? A pepper mill that measures. Okay, anybody else can say that three times fast. I don't know. I'll send you something. Um, but it does. Look, I have one now. So I'm super psyched. And, and who's um, the fine? Do you know? Do you oh, know? no, I don't. I was say, I well, I'm not sure hours. it really works yet, so I'm not going to tell you. Anything until I know. I mean, the it, concept's it, really it did great. make a quarter teaspoon for me, but it took a fair amount of work, guys. So it may be that I have to learn how to do it, but I am really excited that Rob gave me this idea because having that fresh pepper is going to be so delicious um, for the ingredients that we're using. So, anyway, um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about uh, you know, we do the rubs. Why do we do rubs? Well, they're easy, they don't take as long as a marinade. And each of the ingredients of the rub tends to be not only flavorful, but really good for you. Exactly. They are actually really good. I mean, things like they uh, boost our metabolism. Think of cinnamon is known for bursting, as are any things that are sort of um, stimulating. Both, both uh, the clove know, and the cinnamon mm -hmm. help regulate blood sugar. Exactly. That's also that's another right. thing. The regulating blood sugar, lowering cholesterol. When you look at, I can even tell you, I wrote these down so I remember, but what's so cool is in these various ingredients, so in everything we're going to eat tonight, these things are included, or are, are some, in, of, them, some yeah. of them, in something. Um, but, you know, they all have antioxidants. Garlic is this fabulous antioxidant. Walt and I use a lot of fresh garlic. Um, and we just love it, and I love the smell. I just, I love when things are cooking. Um, so you do have to like the smell of garlic, but we do. Um, you know, and it helps protect against cell damage, you know, it's that sort of, you know, free radical thing that we all are trying to get a hold of, sort of that anti-aging, right? And then ginger, um, you know, has, uh, they mentioned glowing skin, which I liked, um, but it also fights off colds and cancer and uh, also is antioxidant. Clove, as you mentioned, it improves digestion, which to me, when you're talking about a meal, how perfect. Yes, right, you use right. use something all that helps things. with that. It's, um, you know, it's anti-carcinogenic and it protects, believe it or not, the liver, regulates blood sugars you mentioned, um, and, um, and, and, you know, just generally enhances the immune system. And then cumin. Oh, have you guys discovered cumin I yet? I love cumin. <gasps> oh my gosh, cumin and something. turmeric together. Yeah. I don't know. I love that combination. And it's so good on so many things. And it's something I've sort of only recently developed a love for. It. Right. I don't, I don't well, we didn't I, really have it I didn't It wasn't part of our yeah, consciousness no. growing up. And it's so think. good and on so many things. Yeah. And then mustard. We're using um, dried mustard. Dried mustard. And um, dried mustard, you know, is one of those things that even helps with things like arthritis and asthma and uh, as well as, you know, blood, blood pressure and um, migraines. I thought that was really interesting. So the point is that, that these wonderful herbs and spices really help us. And not only that, but they're he you know they're healthy overall for us. Um, the and Walt was kind of mentioning you know they're easy to do, so we wanted to show you. He he even created labels, so you guys don't have to go this far. But this way, when we're in a pinch and we're trying to remember, uh oh, I need to make more. He literally has the one tablespoon. Uh, this is something we do for the, the the squash here, the butternut squash. One tablespoon ground clove, one tablespoon cinnamon, one tablespoon ground ginger. It's right there. And we it's have really, this, yeah. the name of it right there. Um, and that it, you know, this is as simple as, and as you can see, I don't buy any one spice. I buy the ones that look good and um, that are the right price at the grocery store. Um, I do try and do more and more of the organics or. Um, you know, simply uh, organic. Simply yeah. organic. The private collection in our grocery store is really nice. And I also I wanted to show you um, 
We have, just like those of you in Kansas City, um, you know, we used to go um, to the local spice shop, and I don't know if you guys have done that, but for what the quality is and how long it lasts, it's actually worth the investment, I found. And so Savory Spice is um, in Boulder, and I tend to use them. I don't know if you looking, oh yeah, Sarah, I can't wait to see you in Denver too. Um, we're gonna have a big convention coming up here Yay. in mid-July, and so many of our friends are gonna be here. Can't wait to show our neck of the woods to folks. But um, I bet, have you guys discovered roasted um, granulated garlic yet? Oh my God, it is so good. As part of the spices and rubs, it's really wonderful. Or granulated garlic. Um, so and you we can, also have roasted ginger. So roasted oh, ground ginger. Oh, so All good. these roasted, yes. So when we were talking about Walt's busy <laughs> doing the apples, any update on that? Well, they've been on for about five or six minutes, and oh, we're they certainly look getting so pretty. you know grilled on top. Mm -hmm. I mean, caramelizing are they? Yes, turn them over a little bit. I think a couple more minutes, and they'll be it, ready. It actually get. smells wonderful, y'all. The other thing I wanted to show you, and he said, um, in terms of added ingredients, you know, there are more and more rubs that are available. You really have to read the ingredients because, unfortunately, like on this one that um, was it's, given to us, that's actually delicious. So, I mean, it's not it's that it really doesn't good, taste good, but, but the first two ingredients are salt and sugar. So, in our rubs, we, t we don't use salt in the rubs themselves. We may add it as part of an ingredient to something, like you'll see me do it with the broccoli. But um, we don't add sugar or salt to our rubs, and they are delicious. And the sugar, as you know, I did stevia, but you have complete control over your rubs this way. So to me, it's really the ratio of the different um, spices mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes our rubs so good. And if you're looking for the rubs, by the way, I want I will of course add them to this um, particular um, um, Facebook Live. But we also, you know, we you go to blog.lovelegahome.com, and I think Cynthia often is very helpful, and she adds that. And there, if you just look up rubs, you'll find um, we have uh, I, I have one that's just meat rubs, where Walt's rubs for lamb, for beef, for chicken, spicy um, chicken, pork. pork fish. Um, we have all of those, and we keep them. We're as simple as this. I mean, of course, you know we love spices, so here are all of our rubs: pork, fish. Um, we have a Thai spice that we make ourselves, and beef rub, and then a spicy chicken rub, because um, Cynthia uh, loves food, but she's not really big on spice, so we kind of alternate it up depending on whether um, we're, we're, we're going risky or not. So, um, so do, doing them yourself really allows you not to have the fillers, not to have the salt, not to have the sugar. Um, that are typically in the ones that you're going to buy at the store, the fillers. Um, you just don't need them. And on top of that, they last forever, you guys. This isn't like something that needs to be refrigerated and that only lasts for a couple of weeks. These last for months, right? As long as your spices will last. So as a confession, we... I know. it. Well, what did you say? Well, depends on the spice. Dep oh, for you, how hot it is. Yeah, she's definitely not a pepper person. This was Cynthia. <laughs> what I was going to say was... We do butternut squash with this rub all the time in the winter, we where do. we cube it and do it in the oven and do it like at 400 degrees so for 25 good. minutes is it's and it's fabulous. you know the replacement for your starch. It is but just so fabulous. Since and our I mean, goal, it's, it's a favorite. It's something when we say, "What do you want for dinner?" that someone will choose and say, "Can we have the butternut squash because it's that good and it's super easy to do." And I will say, the Walter hardest part did, is chopping it. Up. <laughs> Walter did. You know, we got the whole butternut squash this time because this time of year, it's pretty rare that they do go ahead and chop it up. But um, we um, normally can have it in the grocery store already chopped up. And so it makes it so really, really easy. Fast, I, easy. You right. know, they tend to have big chunks. And so what I end up doing is um, cutting them down slightly and then putting the rub on them. So Walt's But I actually this time, cleaver. exactly. I used a cleaver, <laughs> a Cutco cleaver. Hey, why, uh, why do we have a Cutco uh, cleaver? That's right? another son of ours, that's Andrew, right. who uh, did that, so, sold them for that summer. You know how we well, did Well, lots of things, our friends have Cutco, yes, that's I right. know. But Many it's of great. them are watching. Is, yes, thank you a, for buying those Cutco. It's a fabulous cleaver. <laughs> so with that, I then actually made very thin slices. We honestly have not done this before right. on the grill. We're going to do it on the grill, but it's thin enough that anything should be so enough. I'm gonna again just put and some. And it looks in, so pretty with the with the carré, you know, with of, the of, marks of uh, rub on it, 
Put some more mm. in. Put some and, more. And you'll oh, notice that we good. are not adding any oil to this. The oil, we're just adding the spice, and then we're spraying some of this pan lightly on the grill, and that's it. Um, so it so this literally is a dry rub. And um, but this has clove, cinnamon, and ground ginger. Mm -hmm. It smells so fresh mm -hmm. and so alive. And it's just, oh, I mean, just it. right now. And I think that because you it's know, squash clove. has its own uh, wonderful uh, aroma. aroma. <laughs> yes, I, I wasn't going to say smell. I was trying to be a little more hoity-toity. Um, and with then this so, rub, I don't know if you can see, yummy. but I just no. you know, I just sort of with my hand kind of mix it up a little bit. And so it's slightly dusted. I mean, there's not a lot. Nothing is heavily covered at all, but it does sort of get yeah. all. And that is some there. kind of a, a technique. And of course, we don't worry about how much we put on, other than the effect it has on our taste buds, right? You don't have to worry about calories with this. Um, whereas, right, oftentimes, when you're putting ingredients together, you know, one of the things I spent a, a lot of time um, with is trying to be mindful of the combinations of things that we put together when I create recipes so that the outcome is something that we all love and you know isn't too many calories and works well with our plan oh, God, and with this so it's really a matter of dusting it to your liking and tasting but you can over you can over dust you know you can uh, put too many spices in so that's something to experiment for yourself um, and um, I think that's see great. What you think. I mean, yeah, those look so be. yummy, so so yummy. I can't wait to try it with the yogurt that we um, as our kind of finishing dessert touch today. Um, and so, um, um, so oh, you're at Weight Watchers, and and you're catching the video later. Thank you, Pam. That's so nice. That is so nice. Um, thank you. Um, try as we do we double task and these videos are available later so that's kind of nice when you want to go back over it uh, which we hope you do or at least watch it once um, so he's gonna do this next one because with the apple rub you know we had the cinnamon and stevia with this we had ginger and clove um, and some more cinnamon and so that's gonna complement so as he's doing the layers of cooking um, the smells and the kind of what's already in the grill will meld well with what he's grilling here. So I'm still going to add just a little bit of the cooking spray. I just yeah. do that to kind of keep it even though, stick. again, with the uh, George Foreman, it is all Teflon coated, so I don't really need to do that, but mm -hmm. I do. So he's gotten the apples done. We're next doing um, the, the squash, and then we'll do the broccoli, and then the skirt steak. So, um, uh, Oh, thank you. You do like the new kitchen. Awesome. I can't Yay. wait for you to see it in person. Um, can you see things? Do you guys like the, the new right. spread, the new countertop, and the distance so that you can kind of see what we're actually doing? We're hoping this is a good improvement here. We had some comments before that we were sort of showing more the ceiling yeah. than the countertop. And so we're really trying to make sure that we've done a, a better job of showing what we're doing. <laughs> Cindy is telling secrets about our move because we have a very hardworking dad who makes sure that we don't end up with uh, uh, being too discombobulated too long. I worked hard too, I just want you to know. Um, so, um, you know, we wanted to talk to you about how simple rubs are to put together. We wanted to talk about how easy they are to have on hand. I mean, all you need are some empty jars that you fill these with and label them. I mean, the one thing we have found is if you don't label it, then later you go like, what was this? And what was this for? And again, so, having the, the ingredients and the the, oh, it's the so actual wonderful. recipe on it and makes you can it hand so write easy. It. I mean, right. Walt's, you know, he's a perfectionist, so he managed to figure out how to type all this on here and put it on here for us. And we have used these over and over and over again. We um, you know, it, 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 it just makes it so easy to have it available. And, um, and the other thing is, um, you know, they're, you know, they just taste better than store-bought. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I think there's no, and store-bought, you don't end up with all these varieties, honestly. We, you know, we've kind of got developed rubs for just about everything. And one of the things we wanted to talk about is that we have, we've kind of gathered them over the years from, um, different sources. Different sources, and that might be from a recipe, and we love the rub part, and so we actually take it out and use it as a rub. And modify it a little bit or add yeah. something else. Yeah, Walter's very good at that. Yeah. They're just so and good. So one, a couple of the resources, because I think it's kind of fun to share with you. You may have already discovered these or not. 
uh, they're not necessarily the most beautiful names, <laughs> but um, Anne Louise Gilliman, I don't know if you guys know of her. She's been around a long time, and, and uh, many people who have been into kind of getting, uh, you know, on the right track, really cleaning out their system and eating pure foods have used her at, in that process. Right. She has something called the Fat Flush Plan. Yep, that's what it's called. But she has so many um, great kind of rub like ingredients that you can see we've used this a lot. We have all of I know, I know. if I could get it close there, there. You'd, you'd also see how well loved this book is. But one of the things out of here that is truly beloved the by best, us. Absolutely. And we'll probably end up maybe demonstrating this at Thanksgiving exactly. time, although we literally do this all year round. Right. Is what? Well so it's a fennel rub for turkey. I, I think she does it for turkey. We now do it for both. We what we typically do is a turkey breast, so oh it's God. smaller it than, so and it has it has garlic, it has fresh fennel seed or dried fennel seed that I use an old coffee grinder and grind really mm -hmm. thin, mm -hmm. and add garlic to that, and add um, lemon zest. And, it has a lot of and lemon then, zest uh, and lemon in it, so it's a, and, it's and a chicken not stock. A, it's a wet rub. It's not a dry rub. Right, it's chicken stock. And then, and I sort of put it all in, maybe some under the skin then inside. The key here is I do it on a rotisserie. So I can't wait to show you. It, it is so really good. Is, and it's something that's delicious all year round. I mean, this is a, it's a it's great a, summertime. Well, it's an incredible flavor, and oh. because of the rotisserie on the breast, yeah. it keeps all the juices in, and so it's it really flavorful. I mean, it it's really is juicy. It's one of his masterpieces. It's, I, I love, love this turkey yeah, it's breast um, rotisserie like that. And then, um, you know, the fact that you can do them spicy or you can do them mild, you can tailor them to your um, specifications and, you know, and to interest. And also, to spice things up, we like doing the variety. So you're not doing the same thing over and over again. If it, you know, we tend to eat a fair amount of fish and chicken, and you just don't want to use the same spice over again. So we have our spicy versions and our, you know, not so spicy um, versions. Another... Um, resource that was, has been great for developing some of our rubs is the State of Slim. I don't know if you guys know of them, but they're actually here um, in Based Colorado, in Denver, right? or, which is known as the State of Slim, according to them. And um, they put some recipes in this. It's Dr. Um, uh, Jim Hill and um, Dr. Holly Wyatt have teamed up for years, and um, they um, have done some really remarkable things in terms of study of people, uh, you know, dealing with metabolic issues and obesity and health issues related to that so and um, weight loss and success yeah. and weight loss and kind of the differences and they really they do wonderful work right and um they have some really great they tend to spice theirs up so there's a little more spicy than others but we kind of you know again gleaned from them some when, and a lot of the you know we'll have lots of cayenne because it again is so good about keeping your metabolism going but again, Cynthia is not crazy about <laughs> Sarah says she can see the names. Tonight. Yay! Did you figure job. out how we figured this out? Okay, Sarah, so, Sarah will know. I know. Okay. Sarah probably will know. Well, the confession time, we just turned them inside out. <laughs> <laughs> Are we resourceful? Yeah. Or what? So, we tried so to at least you're not having to look at us backwards. Uh, and um, it's really because Sarah's mom gave us the idea and she said, why don't I just do these backwards for you so that you can see it and so we thought well actually maybe we this would work yeah so, so anyway there's maybe. the secret <laughs> it's out <laughs> so um uh let's see how are those doing well and my guess is that they're going to need to go for a few more minutes yes um, and i can and tell you i'm standing here which is very far away from that grill and I'm not feeling the heat of the summer. It's actually over like 100 degrees out here. We're in Colorado and we're having this huge heat spell. And uh, I gotta tell you, this is pretty yummy. I, this is pretty cushy grilling, if you ask me. Yeah, that's yes. right. Um, so, um, and you know, the cleanup is gonna be so delightful. Um, and um, <laughs> it's for nothing if not resourceful. This is so true. Um, so we, you know, and also substitutes, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. I already told you how we substituted on the meat, but in terms of your rubs, you know, if you don't have something, you can always experiment and try and, something else. And honestly, I don't know that I've ever had a flat iron steak, but, you know, a flat iron comes from the iron that you iron within mm -hmm. the shape of it. Mm -hmm. And living in Colorado and actually living in Boulder County, when yes. you say flat iron to me, all you think of are the wonderful flat, flat irons, irons in Boulder, which true. are the, the wonderful um, 
rocks that, that are shaped like that and that are so iconic for the city of Boulder. And just see how you yeah. just so enjoy the meal, right? right? Just right, thinking right. about that. Um, so actually, I may do something on the meat while we're waiting for yeah. that. Why don't we talk and so about what, that? What I will always do on any flat piece of meat like this is I will cut it on the diagonal on both sides and mm -hmm. add the rub to it. Right. Whether I marinate or whether I do a dry rub. And I'll probably use a, a knife that's a little bit serrated. And one of the things to point out since he brought it up is sort of, um, I actually have um, a blog on um, rubs versus marinades. They're both wonderful. And we do both. We do. Um, and um, but the marinades take time, and that's why you know so much of for, with Facebook Live. I wanted to sort of focus on the things that we found to be delicious, easy, and healthy, um, because um, all of us are kind of challenged with the same things. You know, but for any of, of these pieces of juggling meat life that that are a little bit not as tender as yeah, as you might that want. Helps. What I do is just with a slight cut. So I just kind of drag a serrated knife across it, and you see it goes down maybe a uh, maybe a quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. And I'll go in one direction across the get grain, and then I'll actually do you know what the French call carré, where you really do a, a it makes diamond a square. Well, or a square, or a diamond, right? right? Well, a square. exactly. Carré is what yes, diamond. like a checkerboard. <laughs> Shows, you. Shows you my multilingual. Oh yeah, yes, and so I don't know if, how well you can see that. But it Why really is. It the camera it. <laughs> I'm going to do that on one side and the other. And it does a couple of things. It, it sort of cuts through things to allow it to become more tender, but it also gives it a lot more surface area because each of these incisions you make allow the rub or the marinade to get sort of further into the meat. But the important thing to point out with the rubs here, as well as doing this, this will get in there. You don't have to wait with rubs. This, this will happen as Walt's doing it, and so however it melts into that meat, that's it. That's the wonderful thing. You don't have to wait. Um, whereas with marinades, really for their effectiveness, you've got to be able to hang out for a little, at least a minimum of a half hour. I've never found anything to work really well if it doesn't have a, a chance to really you know, integrate um, right. and a, affect the, the food, particularly meats. We so the, meats on. the rub that we're doing on the beef is one tablespoon of cumin to two tablespoons of granulated garlic, and we frequently use the California style, which yeah, has you guys know about that. That's really good. But I don't necessarily for my rubs, but we like it a lot for everything. And then one tablespoon of ground cloves. So I'll just pour some on, sprinkle it on, I should say, and then I'll rub it in and turn it over, and I'll let that sit because the next thing we're gonna do is the broccoli, as soon as the squash comes off. So I've got that, I rub it in. Hi Donna, hi Anne. It's so it delightful to have both of you here. Thank you for joining us for our healthy recipes served up on La Bliga. And um, you can find these rubs again at blog.labligahome.com. And um, also, you know, our website will be, um, we have recipes on there as well. I don't think, um, I'm trying to remember if we have the rubs, um, I don't think we have them on the website. I think they're just on the blog. Yeah, I don't think that's And uh, we'll add that at the end of this uh, to make sure. I know Cynthia has nicely already added um, one of our links so you guys can follow along. But we do have the squash rub and we do have all of the meat rubs already on so the again, blog. So again, I don't know how well you can see, but it's just, it's, yeah, it's nicely already? covered. Again, the curry shows through. Too. I'm going to put it back on the platter for the moment. Yeah. I think it's probably time to pull the squash off and put mm -hmm. the broccoli I'm going to take a peek. I get to do that. Oh, oh, can you guys see at all how it's it's got the grill marks on it? That's one of the things I love about the George Foreman um, is the fact that you it really is like grilling and um, and because you're less fat and less mass um, and because you do both the top and the bottom, it kind of is twice as fast. Right, it may not be quite as hot good. as something outside, but at the right. same time, it really does compress it and you know grill it on both sides. Um, so, although grilling, you know, we think of summer grilling outside, which is great. The wonderful thing about this is that you can do it inside in the air conditioning when it's 100 degrees outside and um, still have a wonderful oh, I don't know so how pretty. much you can see, but it does have really nice grill marks mm -hmm. and smells wonderful. Okay, so we're going to do the broccoli next, correct? Yes. And how do you do the broccoli on a grill? So the fun thing about this is, um, this is really uh, meant to be a kid-friendly recipe, and it's also super easy. 
And when we say, um, uh, so have you looked into pennies? Oh, absolutely, Donna. We've, we've had them forever. Spices come from many uh, places. We do, we do recommend specialty shops of spices because they can tend to be fresher. They can tend to be, you know, where you can get a bright, you know, garlic can come in how many different kinds of uh, ways. You know, as I mentioned, I love the roasted. Um, garlic that can come from different locations, um, like cinnamon. Oh my goodness, the different choices you have in cinnamon now are so wonderful, and they do influence your taste buds. So it's very fun. Um, so back to broccoli. Um, uh, I wrote a children's book. Some of you know, uh, Sammy and Sacks in the Land of Quinoa: The Search for a Balanced Meal. And one of the things in that book is at the end, the kiddos, uh, once they figure out what a balanced meal is, they design their own dinner. Um, because their moms challenged them to do that so she can go to the grocery store. And so one of the, one of the things that they do and, dis and um, design as one of their menus, uh, menu items, is um, grilled uh, broccoli. So I thought it'd be fun to do that tonight. Because kids can help with that. You know, they can help with the cleaning. They can help, depending on how old they are, with the cutting up of it. And this has actually got sliced um, lemon in it. And then I wanted to show you, you all are probably uh, I'm pretty going to put this on while you're... No, you can't because we okay. need to add other ingredients. Okay. So if you want to put it on, let me um, finish that up. So we're going to put, um, as the recipe, we're going to add a teaspoon of olive oil. Um, so this one we do add, so we're doing um, kind of a rub plus. So this is kind of a, a wet one. So we're doing that because we're, of course, we also have the lemon. And the lemon includes the rind and the fruit because they're thinly sliced. The key secret to this is having them thinly sliced. So we have that, and then we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of this just freshly ground pepper on here, and we're gonna do the same amount of the salt. And then um, we're gonna, whoop, oh my gosh, gotta redo that one. So, um, so that's, that's as simple as that, plus this, which we do a teaspoon of as well. Um, like we did a teaspoon of the olive oil. So this is the granulated garlic. And I like the California style because it has some added things like parsley in it. Nothing, the no sugar, you know, no fat, no um, bad stuff, but um, it is pretty flavorful and that's why I like it. And it cooks up well with, the, um, with a lot of things like the, okay, so you're gonna stir that up. It's ready to be stirred up. Um, and it's as easy as that. And then when it grills, one of the things I wanted to point out, was when I do broccoli on the grill, you can't leave it whole or it never really, well, at least I haven't found that it grills well. So I actually it's see. Just thin slices. So, so they're, they're actually. Uh, they're not paper thin, but they are yeah. about. You and know, I don't throw away thick. the other stuff. I mean, if you were doing a fancy party and you wanted it all to look alike, you might handle the leftover parts of the broccoli. But when you're grilling, it kind of needs to be that big. Um, you know, Walt has the the sheets that he uses on the grill so you can do smaller things you know or things that are uh, can kind of fall apart on the grill if you don't watch it and and um and do it that way so it still grills but i just wanted to show you i literally do like i'm cutting bread slices with the broccoli and i do it you know so that i'm doing it lengthwise right so i just wanted to show that because i'm not sure everybody knows that trick and so that's what i'm doing here um, and it ends up making really nice slices, and you try not to do it too thick, so that um, uh, you know it'll grill uh, timely. And you want them to be the same thickness, so again they grill evenly. Um, and then you know you're going to get out to the edges here where um, it's going to be less perfect because they're shorter pieces, but you can still do those that nice um, you know thin slice. And then the same thing. <laughs> I went to the grocery store yesterday. I went to the grocery store to get all the ingredients, right? To make sure they were on hand so we could be organized for this. They were out of lemons at my grocery store. I mean, who was ever out of lemons? Right. Seriously. So I went ahead and got a couple of limes because I thought, resourceful. You know, if we need to do limes, we'll do limes because they're good too. And they can actually be a fun flavor in the summertime. You know, when I think about some of the things that we prepare in the summer, lime is really a, a wonderful compliment. Anyway, then I go today to see if they've got the lemons, and they have these ginormous lemons. I think they were over a dollar a piece. I mean, like, ridiculously expensive. And this is like, this is Kroger, right? I mean, this isn't a fancy grocery store. So I don't know what's going on with the lemons out there, you guys. But anyway, um, 
This recipe calls for a couple of lemons, but those are the little ones. So I only used a half of a lemon for what we ended up putting in the um, grill. We have more left over, um, which we'll do later um, because we wanted to make sure we all could get this all done within the time frame that we want to have for our Facebook Live. So and hopefully we can. <laughs> and hopefully we can. Um, I'm a little nervous. Um, but he's doing a spectacular job. Oh, good. Okay. He's doing a spectacular so job. Yeah. Um, thank you. You know, it's just so fun to think about these things and to be able to share this with you as um, a lot of us are facing holidays here coming up, like the 4th of July and some, you know, clan gatherings. And these are really easy things that can, um, you know, really be served up and uh, shared with, uh, you know, anywhere from four to ten people really easily. I mean, this doesn't take any time. And it's good and they're good for you. You know, so not only are the rubs already ready, but when you think about it, you know, with the skirt steak or, um, you know, even with the broccoli, it's pretty easy prep. Um, and that's something when in the summertime, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I get, you know, I get, uh, I don't know, tired with the heat. I don't want to hassle with things. Um, I don't feel very motivated sometimes. So, but I still, I'm motivated to eat good food, but yes. I don't want to spend... You know, sometimes in the wintertime, we can spend a day having fun. Believe it or not, we like that. That's like a hobby for us, right? So we but it also is sort of warm and, you know, and, and yeah. in the wintertime, that really is very Yeah, nice. and, it's a and, great way to spend the day. And, and yeah. In the summertime, the idea of doing something and doing it outside on the grill really is fun because, again, you're enjoying oh, the Oh, well, the idea that you're sitting outside yeah. with the family, and we don't, we don't have a patio yet. <laughs> We're working on it. Oh, we don't want to show you what the backyard that looks like. We, we, we live on like a former wheat field. And uh, yeah, we, it's we have look a lot like right of but, um, but. but we're working on the inside, and that's pretty good. But, um, you know, Walt and I, we love uh, sharing the fact that um, we met when we were very young. We were 12 years old. And we've kind of been cooking together since we were maybe 13. Yeah. This is going and, on. Yeah, one of our fun things was cooking with friends. Believe it or not, we've had friends for a lifetime who have enjoyed uh, cooking with us, and including Peggy's husband, Bill, who was, uh, you know, early on. We all kind of cooked together and had right. fun. Um, and um, I wish we could share the smells with you of these oh, wonderful so spices. But, um, you know, one of the things that we did when we were early. Um, newlyweds that um, we still have very fond memories of and kind of we have funny stories from too but because we enjoyed cooking together and in those days it wasn't didn't really have anything to do with healthy <laughs> it had to do with fun was, and, learning yeah. and learning recipes and learning recipes yeah. learning how to cook right and so what we would literally do is we'd have what we called guinea pig dinners I highly recommend this. You can do healthy <laughs> guinea pig dinners. Maybe right. we should go back to that. Yeah, right. Um, and so we, we invite two other couples. Yes, so there we would be six of us. Yes. And we, Sheila and I would both pick out things we had never We literally done opened before. the cookbook and we'd go like this. Oh, well, that looks like fun. Uh, Let's yeah. try that. Right. So it didn't matter how ridiculously hard it was. Yeah, or, yeah that was you know, did, has, Have you guys, probably a lot of you have seen the Bridget Jones movies, and do you remember the... The birthday party she was giving herself and she made the green soup or blue yeah blue like, or whatever girl, girl girl i think green of course because <laughs> yeah. but i mean i laugh at that and i think of our guinea pig yes, dinners because yes. we did uh, we never had any real failure but we never told anybody it was edible <laughs> you know right. we're not sure it was what it was supposed to look like but it really Actually, was fun it yeah. really was fun and um we kind of have enjoyed cooking ever since and uh, the main thing was that we wised up that we wanted it to be healthier and healthier, especially with and the kids. Simpler. <laughs> and simpler. <laughs> really mature. I think that's bad. I'm that telling awesome. you. Fresh well, foods are pretty awesome. Though. All those things we, I did initially, we did. There were Julia Child and sauce base. Oh all those wonderful, oh rich sauces. Oh, it was, oh, I oh couldn't do it. Actually, honestly, you guys, I couldn't do that kind of eating anymore. I know. I, I just couldn't do it. I'd be miserable. Um, so... Um, I, how are you guys doing out there? You're doing good? How are we doing with the cooking well, here? Well, I think we're... We're, we're getting, getting there. there. We're getting there. Um, that's the nice thing about thinly slicing things is that you really can grill them in a much shorter period of time. And you know, lemon, I think... When I you think grill it with the broccoli good. like this, I mean, you can squirt lemon on something and it's delicious that way, but this really grills in to the um, broccoli and you end up, you know, you eat the lemon too. So it's this kind of really fresh summary um, experience. Seems sort of Greek somehow. And yeah, Greek, Mediterranean. Um, 
And so it's uh, it's really fun and yeah. and um, and simple to do. And again, a little a little different than you might normally do. Although I think we have some really great cooks who come and and join us here, so they have probably some good advice themselves in terms of um, some of this grilling. Um, do, you, do all of you grill? I mean, do you um, do you enjoy grilling in the summertime? I um, and do you do the grilling, or does somebody else? Uh, in your family or your uh, your your friend friend of me, um, do it. Um, I uh, Walt tends to do most of the grilling, but I I do do some grilling, especially when he's out of town. I, I have stories <laughs> about having to unintentional trips out of town. <laughs> exactly to to suddenly take over the grilling, um, but there is a technique to it, and Walt. I, I'm hoping he'll share with you, uh, especially with the meat, because that is the tricky business, is not to overcook your meat when you're grilling. Um, and it's pretty easy to do, especially we've got this thin, you know, uh, flat iron steak here, and that can, I mean, that, that'll cook in half the time, or even a, what, a third of the time of uh, something you might typically have um, that's, you know. Oh, I should. So, I don't know, California steak, we called it. So, um, so again, I don't know that you could see, but that's the grilled broccoli with the sliced lemon. It all looks really wonderful. So it's it pretty nice, yeah. and it's oh. going to look so pretty on our plates. And um, while he's starting to um, do um, the, the um, flat iron steak, because we're at that point. So with this, yeah. we will have done the meal. And as you can see, I mean, this is a, you know, we're... Where the, our whole goal is to do it within a certain period of time to show you can really serve up dinner, and get it done, and we're doing a lot more gabbing. Although, if you're having friends over, maybe not. We'd, you'd be doing the same amount of gabbing. Um, and Stacy says that you grill a lot, right? Oh, um, and um, so again, when it's super hot or poor air quality, I grill it on the um, uh, in the AM. Oh, that's smart. So you would get it done, and then maybe do you reheat it then, Stacy? Um, is that how you do it? So you grill it in the morning when it's cool, and then you go, you know, do your thing during the day, and then you um, reheat it? Or do you put it back on the grill? What do you do? That sounds like a really clever way of handling the heat in the summer. Yes. So um, I wanted to, you know, we of course feature um, some La Bliga while we're doing this um, to show how we can not only do healthy recipes, but serve it up on La Bliga to be mindful of our portions and to make sure we're eating a delicious balanced meal. And this one was kind of fun today. We wanted to feature the Celebrate because if you can see, this particular one has a cow on it. <laughs> so, so we thought this beef. was a fun one to do exactly. some grilling up and some rubs, some savory rubs. And um, so the Celebrate line uh, is really a very special line to us because each piece is originally designed both in terms of the words, the poetry that we put on it, which is inspiring because, you know, after a hot, hard day, it's pretty nice to be able to sit and read some pretty inspiring words like, celebrate the journey, you know, please your palate. That's what we're trying to do here, right? That's and then cool. the words in the middle, which are kind of our emotive words, are enjoy, muse, smile. Right. And after all, relax, right? So, um, so we wanted to, this is our kind of black and white bistro design and um, we're really proud of it because it also has an extra layer of psychology built into it because you know, I think I've shared with you in the past, but those of you who aren't as familiar with La Bliga, we actually um, are based off of um, the psychology of eating. So we embed a lot of psychology into our plates and you know words, how words have such a profound effect on us and they can have a negative or a positive influence on us. And then we think about food and mood and how they have this like gnarly relationship, right? That's why sometimes we go for that quarter ice cream. Um, uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm not confessing anything. But um, just, so. just, you know, what I'm saying. But this way, you know, we have these words that are inspiring in these beautiful etched um, drawings. You look at that, take a deep breath, you know, take a moment, feel better, feel more in control. And when you we're really more in control... Just, it, it does. It allows you to calm down and... And, and feel more in control, and right? And when control, we're more in so. control, we make better decisions about food, much less life, right? 
So that's kind of the, the fun story behind our Celebrate line. And each 16 pieces, you know, are original. So depending on your mood, Walter loves this when he's, you know, gathering friends over and we're using this. Well, it's really fun because you really get to, to sort of put specific plates at certain people's places and encourage them to live bold or be vibrant, to, to really sort of get out there or maybe not be quite out there as much as they are. <laughs> Uh, celebrate the journey or celebrate good food yes. or, you know, celebrate the spice of life, which is particularly good for today, too. And then we always have the map on the back that tells you serving sizes, because a lot of us just aren't familiar with what the specific serving sizes are for the different food groups. And um, this way, we try and be very helpful. And I don't know if I've ever shared with you guys, but we're actually national strategic partners of the USDA. And we're very honored they sought us out because we're kind of little pipsqueaks. They're huge, you know, corporations like Dannon and General Mills are the national strategic partners. So for us as a young, small company to be included in that group, um, we're really proud of that and, and proud of um, being associated. And our serving sizes are, are actually according to the USDA serving sizes in my plate. So that's, that's, that's the scoop on um, the Celebrate line. Um, today. And how are we doing? Well, I think we're, we're close. So, you know, smells good. because smell it's it. beef, yeah. I'm not as concerned about temperature. Things like oh. uh, poultry, particularly, yeah, pork. And, and, and pork to some extent, I mean, you know, used to be more strongly that we were concerned about that. Beef and lamb, really not as much. And we're right. big, rare eaters. Yeah, that. we are. We've so, grown up in the Midwest, as you know. And um, So from our point of view, as long as it's seared on the outside, uh -huh. and that maybe is three minutes aside and flip it in three minutes. Yeah. My, my old thing is to, to make something carré where it has that really wonderful... Um, marking. Marking on it that's, that's sort of in the, in the diagonal um, diamond pattern is... When you place it on the grill, kind of place it at a 30 or 60 degree angle. And every time you turn, the first two times you turn it, you turn it in that direction and then you switch it 90 degrees and do that. And that really causes the great markings on it. Um, for this, in the George Foreman, you know, we will have been on about five minutes. To some extent, that's the same as 10 minutes outside because okay. it's on both sides. I really think it's perfect. Awesome. So I'm gonna take it off of here and put it on the cutting block. And um, Stacy was asking, do you ever do in bulk? And absolutely, part, part of bulk for us is, you know, often we are two eating and we do a recipe for, or an amount for four. And we're big leftovers people. Um, two ways we do it. One is we just simply have enough, and we have a meal that is left over. And so for us, um, you know, to grab it and take it to the warehouse and um, I heat it in the microwave and eat it, we think it's yummy the next day or the day after. So we do that kind of thing. And then we also do do, you know, I love poaching. So I'll poach like chicken or salmon uh, in a large amount. And then you can use it in a variety of ways. So you can have it hot the first night. You can have it in a salad. You can make salmon cakes. Um, you know, you can um, do a salmon salad, you know, as a sandwich. So they're you know, for us, you know, to have the base done, Stacy, like you were talking about um, with your, you know, grilling ahead of time, sure saves time when you're ready to have the meal, and particularly midday. My biggest problem is I want that healthy, fresh um, for lunch too, but, uh, you know, spending time in the middle of the day is really not realistic for us, obviously, or for anyone. <laughs> um, and, and the so, other thing is to, to you know. grill and then to serve it at room temperature for so many of these things is great in the summertime. So whether it's, you know, there may be artichokes or, or vegetables or, or things that will be part of a meal that then having them grilled ahead of time and then to eat them later. Yeah brought to room temperature is yeah. really just I mean, it's cool. very summery. Yeah, that can be very summery. So well. I, the, it's certainly fine to let the, the, the meat, meat rest. rest for a little right. bit, let the juices all sort of come back and be happy together. Again, I'll sort of try and see which way the grain is going, and I'll always slice against the grain. And I'll also try and cut at about a, a 30 or 60 degree angle, depending on how you're looking at that it. That looks so good. I, oh my gosh, and he's cooked it to perfection, you guys. Oh my goodness, this is so good. Um, I wanted to mention, Sarah mentioned sous vide and that she sort of par cooks. 
and then finishes it up on the grill. And um, our, we, uh, I, I, she has a cousin, August, our son, who is um, a same generation here, and he loves sous vide. He lives, he's a doctor, he doesn't have time, but he loves good food, and this is a great way for him to do it. So he gave us actually a sous vide. Um, we don't spend as much time on sous vide, um, but I, I've had so many good meals that I know exactly what you're talking about. So I don't know if you can see this, but it's juicy, oh God, it's, it's so wonderful, good. it's pink, it's, the juices are perhaps running over the counter a little bit, yeah, but... Don't tell you when. Um, I am going to put about so. three of these slices, will be about three and a half ounces right there. And oh god, it looks good. This don't, really don't looks we good. Have to have just you know, a you know what happens. Out. You know, you know how it is that you have to taste it, and that when you the, taste it, it actually tastes better before you serve it up. Have you ever mm -hmm. noticed that about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Walter, that's good. Oh, so good. It's so juicy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's really this doesn't have a whole lot of fat in it. So again, it does a great job with the rubs. The rubs actually can kind of encase your food and, and um, actually hold in the juices. So, mm. are you getting out the rest of the things so we can serve it And I was gonna, um, yeah, these working on the plate, I also wanted to mention, I think I actually have to stir that up a little bit. Um, but, let's see, I guess I'll get a spoon out. Um, with the dessert, if you remember, um, you can, um, I, I love the Oikos vanilla. And um, you know it's super high in protein. It's nice and thick Greek, um, and um, very tasty. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't actually taste that free at all. Cynthia's coming here to taste too. So, um, so you can do a half cup, which I'm doing here, of the yogurt. And then um, when he gets the apples, we're going to put some apples on this for for dessert. It's also a great, you know, snack. So this is again one of those things when you're talking about pre-prepping. So you can do the apples way ahead and you can either um, heat them up to have them warm on the yogurt or just eat them, you know, delicious as they're cooked, grilled on top of the um, yogurt and it's a fabulous snack. Um, so it can be dessert-like or snack-like and, um, and also be available throughout the week. So depending on how many apples you want to make, it's something you can have. Oh my God, look how good this is. I have to have one little one of this too. He's left them hot, and so. Intentionally. Oh my God, and the sweetness of the apple. Mm. Oh, so since you want some of the meat, is that why you're here? Of oh. course. Uh -huh. So she has to taste, taste test in the kitchen too. Especially since she's worked hard, that, her, worked hard on behalf of Libliga here. Yes. So, um, so here we are. Mm -hmm. We want you to see our luscious meal. So we have the grilled um, broccoli, the grilled butternut squash, all with their own unique um, rubs, and then the wonderful um, flat, flat iron steak, which as you, I don't know if you can see how beautifully well um, cooked that. It's just it's a really perfect pink. And um, so we hope that you have enjoyed this. Um, we sure enjoy being with you. It's so nice when you, as friends, come along and, and join us um, in our kitchen, in our brand new kitchen here. Um, we're with looking... our aprons facing the yeah, right direction. Yeah, I know. Now Yay. you know who we are. Now that you didn't already. And then I just want to mention that our next Facebook Live is, is you know, it's the third Tuesday of every month. So July 24th, please come join us at 530, and we're going to be having a thirst-quenching mocktail uh, Facebook Live because we figured that that time in the summer we want to have some really refreshing drinks that we can add to the delicious meals that we create. So here Sounds we are okay. with our healthy recipes with Walt and Sheila. Yes. Is that right? Right. Uh, served up on the Bliga and we hope that you've enjoyed it and um, you know we sure appreciate you being with us and oopsie I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I guess I'm tripping. <laughs> so take care and we'll um, see you next time. And we hope you enjoy these recipes and we'll make sure to post them on our Facebook Live. Great. So, see you next time. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Are you going to go help us? I will. Turn off. Thanks, guys. Oh, Andy, hi. <laughs>